Other ingredients, natural flavor, citric acid, malic acid, stevia, contempti fruit extract. What in the hell is contempti fruit extract? Welcome to Price File. What's happening everyone? That's right, this is Mike Roberto, founder of PriceFile.com, where we typically on our website have supplement price comparisons and deals, and on this channel we do the news, reviews, and interviews of the dietary supplement industry, and occasionally we do a deep dive on something interesting here. And so I've been wanting to make this video for a while. A while back, my wife Jill and I did a review on the Vaccine Labs Keto One Supplement. Now this is the sour apple flavor, which I like a lot because it's got 130 milligrams of caffeine, it's a little energy drink in there. But it's, uh, they also have some really unique flavors. They have chocolate, like the chocolate raspberry, super good, like crazy good, I love it. But it's always been a little bit different. You see, for those of you who don't, don't know what's going on here, we're gonna talk about a sweetener here, uh, and it's a little bit more than a sweetener. But what I wanna say though is a lot of these like keto supplements they, they, they have these BHB salts, and they're like basically electrolyte salts, and if they don't get flavored properly, they taste salty. Keto One has always tasted a little bit different. It's always just been, had a little bit of that saltiness edge has been off of it. And it's tough to do with stevia alone, is what I've noticed. But what I've seen is when we started researching this, we were like, what is this Katempi fruit extract? Well, it turns out that might be the secret weapon that Vaxin Labs is using here. So Katempi fruit extract is an extract from a fruit. Now that fruit is known as Thaumatococcus Daniela, and they have this Katempi fruit, which is just an insanely sweet fruit. In the 70s, they started extracting this fruit for a protein. It's actually a protein we're gonna be talking about here in this video, known as thaumatin. Now, thaumatin is so sweet, it's marked as 3,000 times sweeter than table sugar, sucrose. And for that reason, it's got a lot of attention for being used as a non-nutritive sweetener. Now, I say non-nutritive because at the doses that we need, because it's so insanely sweet, you're gonna get like 0.1 calories or whatever, but it is a protein. It turns out that this is a, pr a plant protein, which makes it crazy interesting. It's not a carbohydrate, it's not a sugar, it's actually just an absurdly sweet protein. But if you had enough of it, yeah, it would be about four calories per gram like other proteins. However, at the doses that we typically see, you only need like five milligrams, maybe less even, to like, maximum of 400 milligrams in the, uh, and we'll talk about the, the legality stuff, but typically between five and 100 milligrams, and I'm really normally seeing maybe like 25 milligrams seems like a normal point. Now it's often paired with other sweeteners, such as sugar or the stevia in this case, or even uh, a sucralose in an effort to kind of change and modify the flavor a little bit, but also to bring down the other sweeteners. So then you don't need to use as much stevia and don't get as much of that bitter aftertaste. So the flavorous, it, it really depends on what the flavorous do here. But like I said, it's actually a protein. And what's crazy about it is it's nearly a complete protein. And when I say that, I mean, there's nine essential amino acids that the body, that you, they're essential that you need to get either via diet or supplementation. We talk about this a lot on, our, on this channel. Well, this one is actually a plant protein that has eight of the nine essential amino acids, if you had enough of this stuff, and with the one amino acid missing is histidine. So you have some really, really interesting properties, and because it's a protein, it's not gonna give you that high blood sugar spike or any of that, especially because you're using such a low dose of it. And so that's the positives, but there are some negatives with it as well. Because it's a protein, there's certain things that you can't do, such as heat it up too much. Now, I, I mentioned that because I actually do like using this sour apple with warm water at night. I think it's like a good little like light energy drink uh, in the evening when it's getting colder outside. So I've actually never, I think it tastes awesome. I've never had anything change with it, but at some point that protein may degrade and so I'm not sure if like it could be used for baking at 400 degrees or whatever. That's where like we would have to look at a little bit of different data. Now a lot of the stuff I'm going to pull out is actually going to come from the World Health Organization here. And we have a blog post talking about this, citing all the sources. But the World Health Organization was involved because this has actually been approved as a sweetener since the 1970s. However, in the United States, this is November of 2018 right now, just this summer, and I'm glad I waited to make this video, but just this summer, things have started to change. Before this summer, it could not be called a sweetener, and it could not be used as a food additive, and that is all changing, so we're gonna get into that. Now, as far as the flavor itself, it's one of those flavors that builds up and intensifies over time, over sips and everything, and if you have it alone, you're gonna get a like a sweet, but like a, a licorice kind of aftertaste. So it really, it doesn't typically get used on its own, it's going to get paired with other things. And, and that's where things get pretty wild because as a protein, it can bind with other things and a, a true flavorist would know how to mess with it. It can also change the mouthfeel of things it's mixed with. So for instance, you could actually mix thaumatin with the amino acid L-alanine and it will 
not only double the intensity of flavor, but it'll make it faster. Like you'll have a faster hit of sweetness because of that. But at the same time, this might also bind to certain artificial colors, certain thickeners, xanthan gum, carrageenan, and it might degrade the amount of sweetness because it's gonna start binding with stuff. So you have like a really, this is a really fascinating ingredient is what I realized. Uh, but thankfully we don't have any of that stuff in this supplement and that might be why I like it. So I, I think this is a new tool for flavors to use. Um, and it's been allowed, like I said, in the EU, EU since the 70s under the trade name Talin, T-A-L-I-N. It's been used and extracted. You know, it's expensive. And that's probably why you don't see it as often. Uh, but so yeah, it's been used in the EU since the 70s. However, it was only allowed to be used in America as a flavoring agent or a flavor modifier in dietary supplements. It was not allowed to be used as a sweetener and not a food additive and not in foodstuffs until and this is where we started digging up some of the new regulatory stuff. Until this summer in 2018, a German company known as Nomad Bioscience actually petitioned the FDA for grass status or generally recognized as safe. And there's been now been enough safety research and enough studies done on this stuff, most of it from the World Health Organization, a lot of it um, out of like China, Africa, and Europe. There's been enough safety data showing that they, uh, they believe that this should be able to be used as a sweetener. And the FDA responded with a low no or a letter of no objection. Now, when you're going for a self, a self affirmed grass status, that's a good thing. Not getting rejected is kind of like, kind of like getting approved for the doses that they wanted, which were somewhere between like five milligrams or even one milligram to 400 milligrams max per kilogram of material. So we're talking about like, 0.01% of, of your product using this stuff. Very, very, very low doses needed. And then you have a flavors who kind of works with the material to make sure that you're getting the right flavor notes and everything. And that's a whole other game that we, we can't totally get into here, not my expertise, but it's another tool in the toolbox. So the FDA is now going to be allowing this in certain doses to be used as a sweetener. And not only that, but Nomad Bioscience was really quick to respond and they, they said that they're going after even more grass status approvals or non-disapprovals, I guess you could say, uh, as a, a flavor modifier. And so there's a whole lot of stuff that, that people can do with this. It's been out there in Europe. It is an expensive ingredient, but we're always looking for non-nutritive or very, very low calorie sweeteners that are sweet. Stevia is good, but it's got that bitter aftertaste. And this seems to like do something that, that can possibly dampen it down, at least in certain products. So that's what has everyone excited. But at this point, you probably want to hear about the safety profile. Now, knowing that it's been approved as a sweetener in Europe and is finally generally recognized as safe as a sweetener in America, that's good for those of you who trust. But for everyone else who wants a little bit more data, we have some of that. Now, a lot of this, again, is coming from the World Health Organization. And so some of these studies aren't on like NIH.gov or on PubMed or any of that stuff, but we do have the citations and the blog post. So I'm gonna look down and do a little bit of reading here. But yeah, first, the first was a 90-day study on rats. We like this one, 20 males, 20 females, and they're randomly assigned different groups. You have the 0% control group, and they're adding a percent of their diet in thaumatin. And the 0%, which is the control group, 0.3%, 1%, or even 3% of their diet from thaumatin. And then they were looking at, um, if then, then, you know, after the 90 days ran their course, they had to, uh, what's the proper word, terminate the, the, the subjects, I think. And then they inspected the liver, the kidneys, the heart, lung, spleen, and brain, and all of them came back normal. However, there was one interesting thing that happened here, and it shouldn't be surprising because this is a protein. The animals who had 3% of their diet coming from this stuff gained a little bit of weight. So if it's protein. If you're gonna eat enough of this, you're gonna gain weight, but it's not approved for that style of eating. This is approved for like milligram use, not kilos of it. So after that, I'm sure a lot of people are looking into human doses. What do we, uh, what, how do we, the humans react? So the first was a small study. This is only 14 days, so uh, it's only two weeks. But they had, I believe, let's see, four women and six men. It's a pretty small, but they were blindly assigned to do two different groups. One of them got a 100 milligrams uh, capsule of thaumatin, which is a pretty reasonable dose. That's uh, on the high end of what I think we'll end up being seeing. And the other group got a 100 milligram capsule of lactose. They then were looking at the blood samples after that and they found that there was no allergenicity found, so there was no allergic reactions. But again, that was a small sample size. Still good news. We, they're really basically, what we're seeing is that there has not been any issues found in terms of like car carcinogenicity or in terms of DNA damage or like mitochondrial damage, like nothing happening. It's just like, 
it's just an absurdly sweet protein is what it, what it seems like. Now, the big question that we'll have eventually, if this becomes popular over time, which it may or may not, depends on the price really and how people are mixing it, is how it, how it handles the, how the gut microbiome handles it because that might be where the most important thing is and we don't have any information on that. So hopefully we get more. But in terms of blood biochemistry, here's a bigger study, 13 weeks long, 18 males, 12 females assigned to random groups, either given, this is a big dose, 280 milligrams of thaumatin or 280 milligrams of egg albumin. And after that, they took, the blood they took the blood samples and there are no chemical or cellular changes noticed in any of the blood samples there. So again, it's, it's seeming like a very safe, at least in the short term, and by short term I mean between like one day and 13 weeks, it seems like a safe thing. It is a nearly complete protein with a pretty full amino acid spectrum but you have such low, low doses that they're not really finding any problems with it. So because of the Nomad Bioscience grass approval or non-disapproval, like I said, I'm thinking that we might start seeing this a little bit more, at least in the food companies. Now, the only supplement I've ever had with it is this Vaccine Labs Keto One. And for that reason, if you really, if you're out there and you're like into this flavor game and you kind of like this stuff and you're into geeking it up, then that would be the supplement you have to buy. It might be out there. I've seen like some dead listings on Amazon. So really the only place I'm seeing this right now is Vaccine Labs is Keto One. But don't be surprised if you're watching this out in the future, don't be surprised if time traveling on, we start seeing this in some food because Nomad Bioscience is going after it, I think, in order to get it used in, in like a food company's food as an additive, they have to go through Nomad Biosciences, at least their process. So that's kind of how it's gonna be working. So other than that, yeah, that's, that's about all I have to say. The, 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 the dosing strategy seems to be very light, like 0.01% of, your, of your, your product. If you have like a 13 gram pre-workout, like 25 milligrams alongside of some stevia might be enough to get it done. If you're using sucralose, you could probably lower the amount of sucralose and up the amount of contempi fruit extract. A lot of people are enjoying that. We're trying to get away from a lot of the artificial sweeteners. And this is, like I said, just one more tool in the toolbox. So now you know, if you see contempi fruit extract or thaumatin or tailin, this is actually just a crazy sweet protein that comes from a plant in Africa. And there's others like it too. So in America, we're kind of weird with our sweeteners. I mean, we're still drinking Diet Cokes with all sorts of aspartame and all that crap in it. But we are also slow to approve some of these like more natural ones, which is kind of weird. And I keep saying the word approve, and I mean to say non-disapprove, but we're kind of weird about these sweeteners. And like Americans want a ton of research on their things, and there's a lot of different arguments over aspartame and saccharin and ACE K. So if you're looking for something different, this is the one. Now, I'd like to thank all the people out there. I'd like to thank Facts and Labs because I have to say this tub was sent for free, but that's not the point here. But I have to thank all the earlier YouTube videos for kind of forging the way here. They were well ahead of the curve. They're talking about Stevie, they're talking about this stuff. But I wanted to drop this update really because I think this stuff is going to be a little bit more on the market now that it's got a little bit more approval. So you can look to Nomad Bioscience for that. But if you're just like a supplement consumer, interested in something different, check out the Vaccine Labs Keto One Supplement. If you want some energy, the sour apple flavor, heat it up like a minute in the microwave, glass of water, mix it in there, good stuff. And then if you want some chocolate because you're a keto diet and you missed that chocolate, the chocolate raspberry is awesome. So thanks again for watching. This is Mike Roberto, founder and CEO of Pricelaw.com. Normally we don't talk about these sweeteners, but I know a lot of people are interested in it. And this one I find fascinating. So thumb attend it is. We'll see you next time. Subscribe and hit the bell for the notifications because we got more coming. See ya. Welcome to Price Plow.